like crows in a strong wind. Off go the crows from the roof. The crows can't hold on. They might as well be perched on an oil slick. Such an awkward dance, these gentlemen in their spotted black coats. Such a tipsy dance, as if they didn't know where they were. Such a humorous dance as they try to set things right, as the wind reduces them. Such a sorrowful dance. How embarrassing is love when it goes wrong in front of everyone. I'm Cornelius Eady. Um, I am from a number, a number of places, um, uh, but right now I'm from New York and uh, I teach at the University of Missouri. And I'm here because um, I was invited to uh, perform for the Mission Creek uh, Festival. No, no, uh, you know, from working in theater, um, I learned you have to get rid of the uh, luxury of trying to, uh, uh, you know, uh, contemplate. <laughs> you, know, you know, if you're working on a, you're working on a script, or you're working from a script, and you're in um, production, or you're also, or you're in, in development, and you're in, a, you're in, and a scene doesn't work out, or, or the scene you thought was going to work out doesn't work the way you think it's going to work out, and you got to change it. And you can't, I can't wait three days and decide. I've got to, you know, think about what the motivation is. I got to finish. I got to do the script. Get to, get it up for the next day work. So I learned very quickly to jettison that and work quickly. I can work on the fly now and I'm very good, you know, I think I'm very good at that. So I don't really require, I used to require a lot of space and time and, you know, stuff to, to write, but I don't need that anymore. Um, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's simply just part of the, you know, the, the technique I've got now. Well, I'm on leave right now from the University of Missouri, and that's, and that's not, not exactly charging the batteries, but it's simply changing the emphasis of what I do during this time um, from teaching to, to you know, study and, and writing. I'm working on a number of projects right now, and so, and so I don't know if that recharges the battery, but you know, the battery always seems to be at the same level. So, 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 so what, what I basically do is, is stop Change, change the focus and the emphasis, right? I, I don't have to you know, be obligated to prepare classes or get ready for classes or follow the class for the two classes I usually do this time of the year. I'm now working on, I've been working on a couple of projects, one being a, um, um, a, a CD uh, chapbook of songs that I've been working on over the past two years and, and that closed it up. I, you know, I was able to finish those, those, uh, that project. The other thing was, um, is a, uh, a book that we're gonna do with Kaveh Khanum. Um, it, it might be uh, considered kind of a, kind of a textbook. But um, so, so, so we're preparing for that, and the time is being spent for that. So I've sort of gone from one you know, way of looking at the, uh, spending my time to, to another. And, it, and, and, and it's also maybe going back to, to what I was, to was saying earlier about uh, you reach a certain point and um, this is all you do. You know, it isn't like there's a, there's a door you go in and you close the door and then suddenly you're someplace else. You know, at least for me, that, that, that is everything I do was writer related, right? It's either I'm teaching it or I'm writing it or I'm thinking about writing it or I'm, you know, I'm reading somebody's manuscript or something else. But so, so it's always, that's the essence of what I do right now. So it isn't, there isn't like a break. It's, it's like I do what I love to do, you know? And I get to do it, you know, sometimes more intensely at, at times than others. And this is one of those times I get to be a little more intense with the other creating part of it. Everything sort of impacts a writer, I think, uh, consciously or subconsciously. I was talking to uh, some students uh, yesterday uh, uh, here on campus, and uh, I was simply bringing up to them that, you know, you should be more, I didn't, I, not knowing whether they read or not, or what their reading schedule was, or what, whatever, they, you know, I simply brought it up as sort of a general uh, topic, that if, if you're writing, you should be reading, because you should be conscious of the fact of, of what's influencing you as a writer. Um, that when you are writing something that you, know, you think is very political or soulful or um, um, you know, s something that's, that's topical, you're actually being, in a sense, Wintman-esque, you know? And you should know, you know, this is, this is part of what, you know, there's, there's a whole school here that's influencing you. And the, and the stuff that you've read that's influenced you is partly influenced by, you know, this man who lives back in the, you know, mid uh, 1800s and, and, and basically, you know, it changed the course of American poetry, you know, from one form to another to give us permission to do certain things. So, so, so everyone's influenced, right? And, and, I, and I, you know, I, as I was talking to that class, 
I became conscious of, of how um, um, 45s, uh, uh, the short form of a 45 record, uh, probably had some sort of influence on, on my own short poetry. Um, I was talking, because they were asking me this question, what are your influences, and why, why have you, how have you tied it to become a writer? And, 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 and I said, I said that, I said, well, you know, I was thinking about this. I, you know, when I was, when I was, a, when I was a kid, I'd be listening a lot to uh, uh, AM radio, and, and AM radio was just this smorgasbord of, of different uh, influences, because they simply didn't, it wasn't as uh, classified as it is these days. I mean, well, there was race records, and there was, you know, pop music, but, 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 but it, it wasn't, uh, as many compartments as there are now. And, um, and so you would hear all these different things. You would hear, you know, Stan Getz you know, with the girl from Ipanema, and then you would hear something by the birds, and then you'd hear, you know, a Broadway musical tune, and then you would hear something, and it's all within a half hour, right? right? So, 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 so I hear these different ways of talking about the short form, and basically I was thinking about this, because I was saying, and then I, I, I was telling you that the, the, I thought the, um, the, uh, the, the top of that, uh, form. The people who did that the best were the Beatles. The Beatles were absolutely masters of the short 45. They could really just put a real great song together in, in two and a half minutes. And, uh, and it suddenly occurred to me that the short form was, that was really kind of an influence. You know, that the idea of suddenly doing something that really that compact and really fast and really that, be, that complete and then just, just move on to the next thing um, influences me in the sense that it's, it's kind of a short line kind of thing. So, so, so I was telling you the Beatles actually perfected that form, and then they broke it with Sgt. Pemper when they started decided that uh, they, they turned the album into an art form <laughs> from that point on. And when you guys are talking about you know these, this, the, the, this new hot group that's doing this concept album, where the concept album goes all the way back to Sgt. Pemper, and they're actually being influenced by you know by that is, 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 is their, their legacy of the Beatles is that. So so the so the short form became. I suddenly realized that 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 probably did have an influence on me as, as a kind of a model, you know? And I realized also, and I said I was talking about, so I started gravitating toward the poets that actually did short form, you know? Which in that case, my case happened to be um, the images, you know? Uh, you know, and, and then moving from the images to the beats, and then, you know, but, 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 that, but that idea of the compactness uh, probably had a part of its genesis in just listening to pop music. I think there's a spiritual dimension to, to human beings. And I really do, you know. Um, I think sometimes when it codifies the stuff into religion, there's a lot of problems with that. But, 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 uh, but the basic questions that we want to ask, and we also ask through literature, you know, is basically just what's the story, you know, and how do I fit into the story, you know? What's, what's my story in comparison to everyone else's story? Does everyone else have the same story? And, my, and what's the difference between the stories that we hold? So, so but, there's, but there's also this idea of trying to figure out what is mysterious, and we, and we never get to figure it out, because, because we, we get to a certain point. This is what I think faith is really about. You, you, you get to the point where suddenly you realize you're never going to figure it out. I mean, you're never going to figure it out. You, you'll, you'll get to figure out some stuff. You're going to get to know what some things, how things can happen, but you'll never figure it out. And you also suddenly realize that you're this, in this huge, huge um, universe. I mean, that's how we start. I think how literature has its, start, has its origins in just trying to figure out where the hell we were and how the little stars get up into the sky and why does it turn from day to night and how come people, you know, do this to each other and, you know, you know, so, you know I, I think people have a, have a, a, young, a big yearning for that. I, no, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm not as spiritual as, as a lot of the people that I know. I, I tend to think it, it's more biological. I think that, that we're basically a very limited uh, model that we get, we don't get to see stuff because we, we don't, we're not equipped to see stuff, you know? And so we have to guess, right? Why is that here and why is that also here? I, I think people have an innate sense of, of a spiritualism and I think people have an innate sense of justice and injustice. And I think that and if you go back and, listen, and look through history, it, it's just a, a, a thread that runs all the way through. And, and, and I think that, that sometimes writing or literature is a way of addressing, you know, that. You know, the idea of that the spiritual hunger that we have for where we are as human beings and how come we don't get to figure things out and how can we do, how, how can we do this stuff to each other and still you know, get along. And then this idea, it was also ties into this idea of justice or injustice, you know. There's different ways and different levels that, that writers through the ages have responded to that idea of what is justice and what is injustice and how do we figure this out and who gets to control that story. So, so, so I think that's, that's inherently hotwired into us. 
Well, there you go. I, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I really hate uh, to go back to the idea of when spiritualism gets codified into some sort of code, you know, uh, the, the unfortunate sort of uh, results from this. Um, and and, it, and it, it spills over into, you know, writing. The, the stuff I hate about writing is, is when writing starts to feel more like a religion. When you have high priest and low priest and people who are in and people who are out and little cults and, you know, these, these other things. And the nature of most cults is to decide to figure out who to exclude, right? I, I mean, you have to do it for your own self-preservation. You have to figure out, you know, who, do you, who are you against or who should you attack? And, and uh, I, I'm at the point where I think it, is, it just wastes a lot of time and energy. You know, it really, and I hate waste. I hate watching it, you know. I hate watching waste, knowing that there's nothing you can really do about it because it's human nature. That's what we're going to do. We select. We self-select. We do these other things. But, 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 I, but, in, but, in, but in observing how that, the different ways that breaks down, it can be pretty uh, brutal to watch. And I hate this idea that, that sometimes people decide that what high art and low art actually is and who is and who and isn't it. Uh, you know, who's hot and who isn't. Uh, you know, who's the high priest and who isn't the high priest and who's the disciples, who's the sinners. You know, I mean, it, it goes on and on. Uh, I've had my taste of it in my, personally through my career. Uh, I've seen how it happens to, to, to other people. Uh, I, I, still, I see it done still today, you know. So, so, so it's, it's, you know, that part of it I could do without. You know, as a writer, trying to waste my time trying to figure out who's a writer, who is it. To me, it, it, it comes down to basically, does it work?